Hi hey everybody. I thought I'd give you a, a little um, heads up here on this problem. This is uh, problem five, uh, or no, yeah, I think it is five, right? Yeah, problem five, problem one, five, problem chapter one, five A. And one of your classmates asked me about this, which is the best thing you can do. You know, if I can give you help on the homework, you, all you've got to do is ask. And because we've got to move so fast in this course, it's really difficult. You don't have any time to ponder anything on your own, okay? So if you got questions, don't hesitate to ask. Now this is about uh, Delight Dry Cleaners, and it's owned by this guy, Joel Polk. And um, and what he's doing, uh, currently he's renting, uh, building and equipment are currently being rented, and he plans on expanding to new facilities. And the work is actually, of dry cleaning is done by another company for a fee. And then they give us beginning balances here in, in the uh, on the balance sheet. And those balances are input here already on this worksheet. And what's nice about the worksheet is that if you make a mistake, it's going to give you a little red mark out here. Um, and I just made about a million of them, so um, I'm really familiar with it. So this is um, the other thing I wanted to tell you is that this number right here tells you how correct you are on the whole problem. Okay, so let's say let's look at this first one. So there's 45.93775. Okay, and if we wanted to make sure that my assets equaled my liabilities in um, owner's equity, you can just um, sum across your assets. You can see down here the ton, the sum is two hundred and twenty thousand. You can't see. There we go, two hundred and twenty thousand right there. Okay, so then we can go here. And, and add up all across here, all the way through the expenses if we wanted to, and that comes up to 220000 also. So we know that we're in balance. Okay, you don't want to find out at the very end of a problem that the blasted thing doesn't balance. Okay, so then um, the owner puts some money into the account. So the first thing you've got to do is put a plus sign in this column indicating whether we're adding or subtracting it, and just put it in and then hit the tab and go to the next field. Okay, you don't have to reference anything else in there. And this is um, 35000 for, yeah, the money that he invested in the business. So that increased the asset cash, all right, and it increased Joe Paul Capital, 35000 And the other thing to understand here is that his business is separate from the owner's personal funds. Okay, even though he's the owner and he, he owns the business and everything, it doesn't matter. Okay, the, the business and the individual are, are two separate entities. Okay, so after we put in those transactions, then we've got to uh, bring down our totals again. So now I've got 45 plus 35, I've got 80,000 in cash. None of these accounts have changed. And I've got 215,000 in capital. Okay. Then the next, for Part B, we paid 50000 for the purchase of land that's adjacent to the property. So this would be a negative 50000 And then a positive, positive, we increased the value of land. So the change in total assets is zero. Okay, so I've decreased the asset cash, increased the asset land, and then I'm going to run all my totals again. Okay, the next thing that happens in C, Receive cash from customers for dry cleaning revenue, 32125 So you're going to increase the asset, it's going to be a plus sign, increase the asset cash, 32125 and increase dry cleaning revenue, 32125 Okay, and then run all of our totals again. So that's the way this works. Okay, the whole sheet, and just be sensitive to when you get a, pl a, a little red mark over here. That means that something's wrong. So it's kind of handy the way it, it um, checks all the time if you're all right. So let's say we've got this finished. And then I'm going to have my total cash, total accounts, receivables, supplies, and land. Those are all my assets. These totals will go in, in, um, hey, Kitty, in our asset accounts right over here on the balance sheet. Okay? Right in here. That's where, it, like, like in here, I'll write cash. Oh, select an account from the drop-down list. You guys are spoiled. So there's cash. And then we'll have accounts receivable. Then we'll have supplies. These should be in the order of liquidity, actually, uh, with short-term assets first and then long-term. And there's land. Okay? And we'll put our balances right in here. 
And then we've got liabilities. We've only got one liability account, and that's accounts payable uh, right here. Okay, that's our only liability is right there. And then the next one is owner's equity. And owner's equity is going to be, what do they have here? Uh, total liability, okay, liabilities, total liabilities and owner's equity. So owner's equity is going to be, um, they don't have a, yeah, we've got a statement right here. So owner's equity is going to be this total um, right down here off the statement of owner's equity. All right, so that total is going to go right in here for owner's equity, and that would be um, the capital account. All right. Now, for the statement of cash flows, this is a tricky one to do, um, but it's, it's actually one of the most powerful statements that's available to investors to look at because um, you can't fool cash, okay? Cash, cash is cash. So uh, what we're going to have here, I'm going to show you something here. I'm going to open up one more page here. I want you to think of, um, it's not letting me, let me have to open up a new file. Hold on one second. I want you to think of this, here's a statement of cash flows. And first we're going to have um, cash from operating activities. And these are, okay, operating activities are uh, what we do in our business, okay? So this it would include something like um, cash received from customers, cash paid to suppliers. What else do we have here? Um, So cash received from customers is going to be right, um, actually it's in cash and it affects um, what happens to accounts receivable, you know, or, or here we've got a sale for cash for 32125 and there's your cash. So that is cash received from customers. Okay, and then we've got, remember he's, he's farming this out, somebody else is doing the work and we've got uh, dry cleaning expense, so then cash paid to dry cleaner. I gotta find it. Yeah. Um, cash paid to, let's call him um, dry cleaner. Oh my God. Let's go back to our statement over here. Maybe they were kind enough to give you uh, balances here to use. So cash from operating activities, there we go. Okay, we can just pull down here. This is going to be um, cash receipts from customers. Mm, cash, let's see. Cash payments for expenses and for payments to creditors, and you can see everything from what hit the, from what hit the cash account, okay? And then this would be net cash flow from operating activities. So that's going to be the total right there. Now the other thing I wanted to show you is that all of these accounts are going to be. Um, uh, let's see. I'm going to put a bracket in here. Oh God. These are um, items affecting current assets and current liabilities. Okay, let's let me get the this down and then we'll take a look at it and then cash from fine from investing activities this is um, um, transactions effect got hiccups affecting long-term assets okay 
for investing and then financing. So what we're really doing here is going right around the balance sheet. Transactions affecting a long-term, that's assets, this would be long-term liabilities. Uh, long-term liabilities like bonds, loans, and uh, equity accounts. So the money that we get from the owner would be listed in here in here okay so if you look to the balance sheet and I think there's a like an illustration of this in the video that if you look at the long-term assets and li liabilities those are all cash um, cash from operating activities and then on the long-term asset side it's invest investing long-term um, um, on the equity side those are financing activities okay alright and that all centers on the balance sheet so the way to to get those numbers off here, see, let's see what they have for financing activities. We, what did we do? We, um, we received the owner's investment. I think that's it. For investing activities, all they had was the cash for the payment for the purchase of land. I think that's it. Do they have any dividends that they paid? We had a withdrawal by the owner. That would be there. And then this would be the total. Did I miss one here? No, withdrawal by the owner. And then this one would be the total. Okay. Now this is 12 minutes long, way too long, and that will give you your um, increase in cash. Um, it, up, up here, you want to enter the period, okay? And, and for the statement of cash flows, this would be for a period, period of time. So it would be, I would put it for the month ended. The month ended just for the month. Okay, now all the entries on the statement of cash flows have to have hit the cash column. This is where they have to come from. Okay, it only involves cash. And just think that all of these, all, all of the things that affect accounts receivable, supplies, and accounts payable, those are operating activities. Land is an investing activity. And then these, okay, um, your your cap, capital account and your drawing account and any rev revenues and expenses, those are financing activities, okay, because net income is like included in there. Boy, I hope this helps. Uh, well, I'll take a look at what, what, what where you guys are tomorrow. Okay.